Hi, my name is Rich Harrington and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for Video. Today I've got a special treat for you. We're going to do something that starts in Photoshop and ends up in After Effects. Now we're going to be working with the Puppet tool which will allow us to take a photo and turn it into a character driven type animation. In this case we're going to take a photo of a bird and animate it. Now in order to do this it'll work with really any version of Photoshop but you are going to need After Effects CS3 to try this out. The good news is, is if you don't have After Effects, you can go to Adobe's website and download it as a free, fully functional 30-day demo. So trust me, this technique is cool. So if you don't have After Effects, start the download right now, pause this movie, and then by the time you need it, you'll have it. All right, let's jump in. What I have here is a basic photo of a bird sitting on a branch. And we're going to go ahead and animate this. Now, in order to animate it, I need the image to have layers. So let's go ahead here and first start off by making a selection on the bird. Now you could try things like the color range tool if you want and you can click and drag and that does okay. But what I'm going to try is the quick selection tool in Photoshop CS3 and we'll see how that does. It's located up here with the wand tool and it's up top there because it's significantly better than the wand and I can click and start to drag and you'll see that it builds a selection. No selection is going to be perfect the first time you make it, so don't try for perfection. Just get most of what you need here by dragging through the image, and then we'll fill in the rest here in a second. There we go. Let's drag through. And, you know, a lot of folks get intimidated by this because it does take a little bit of practice. Now, we didn't get exactly what we wanted, but it's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that background layer, and we'll call this duplicate copy bird. And with the active selection, I'll click the Add Layer Mask button here, and it's masked. This is easier to see if we turn the bird background layer off, just looking at this top one. Now this is really rough, and we're going to need to fix this up here, but just hang in there. Trust me, it is worth it. To make it a little easier, I'll drop a solid color layer in so I could see what's going on behind it, and we'll just put blue back there so it's high contrast. Now if you look here at the layers palette, you'll see you have the layer thumbnail and the mask. And the mask is black and white. If you want to make this easier to see, you can go to palette options and just beef up the size of that thumbnail so you can see it more clearly. What we need to do is adjust the layer mask and we'll do that with paintbrush. Now what I'm going to show you here is a little bit time consuming, so I'm going to do the major steps and you're going to have to hang in there. I'm going to make this photo available on the photoshopforvideo.com website so you can download it and give it a try. Trust me, it takes a little bit of time, but the end results are really quite cool. With the layer mask selected, I'm going to grab my paintbrush here, and if I paint with white, the mask will get bigger. So let's size our brush here and paint a little bit. And painting with white, you'll see that we can start to add in some parts of the bird that we're missing. Now this works pretty well, and as we go along here, I'm just tracing the edge of the bird. It's doing okay. But at some point, I'm going to want to soften the brush up. So don't be afraid to click here and adjust the hardness slider so you get a little bit of a gentle edge. And this doesn't have to be perfect, but what you want to do is go through and paint in the bird. Now if you get areas you don't want, don't worry, we'll cover how to remove those in a second. Now, when I go along this edge here, you'll see that it's a little bit rough. So one thing I could do is grab the Blur tool. If I click here and grab, you'll see we have Blur. Get a nice big brush, right bracket, and just go over that edge, and you'll see that what we're doing is we're not actually blurring the image, rather we're blurring the edge. So we have a gentle feathered edge as opposed to a hard edge. There we go and you see that we get a slightly more believable edge now as we go through. To clean this up, we have a little bit of a tough area up here. What I like to use is use the smudge tool. So I'll choose that, and I'll say that I want to smudge only the dark pixels. This way, when I push with the smudge tool, you'll see that the black pixels in the layer mask can get pushed in. Make that a little stronger. There we go. And as I push here, they get pushed inward. So you could use this to basically finger paint your edges and clean them up like they're wet paint. And if you push back the other way, nothing's going to happen. 
That's because in darkened mode, only the pixels that are darker will actually move. There we go. In this tough area here, I'm going to grab the paintbrush again. And instead of painting with pure black, we'll paint with 20% black. And let's zoom in a little bit. What we need to do in this tough area is paint up the transparency over time. So if I paint a few strokes in there, you'll see how we get some softer transparency built up. Again, this does not have to be perfect. So what you're trying to do is just build up that transparency so it seems a little bit believable. And remember, you're dealing with a soft feather. So literally, the feathers should have a feathered edge. There we go. We can go along the edge here a little bit, soften that up. And that's pretty good. Now, we can be a perfectionist, and in fact, later on, I'll give you the perfect image, but you'll just touch this up. To get rid of the branch here, we'll grab the paintbrush and painting with a full opaque black, we'll go ahead and paint out the tree. There we go. And that did a pretty good job. What we then need to do is remove this leaf that's in front of the bird. So to do this, I'm going to just take advantage of cloning. I'll click on the image here, grab the clone stamp, S for stamp, and we're just going to go ahead and option click to set a sample point and clone out the green leaves there. Notice how the can clone and the transparency mask still keeps everything clean. Do the same thing down here. Option click to select the foot and we'll clone a little bit of that in to make it look like a contact point. That works well. Paint a little bit back in down here, select the mask, grab some white, and paint in to extend the feathers. Go back, click on the bird thumbnail, grab the stamp tool, option click, and clone it in. So we're just extending the pattern here a little bit there, and you see that that worked very well. So there's the bird on the layer appropriately called bird. Let's go ahead and duplicate the background layer one more time, and we'll put that up top here and we'll call this one branch. And all I'm going to do is try to select the leafy branch that's going in front here. Let's zoom in a little bit with the magnifying glass and we will try the quick selection tool again. Click and drag and it's making an okay selection. There we go. And we're just trying to grab the leaves. There we go. And it did okay. If you wanted to, you could be a little bit more finessing and you could go after those a couple of ways. I'm just going to be lazy here and I'm going to do select color range and simply select the leaf. Pull the fuzziness slider way down and go after those individual leaves. There we go. That did a pretty good job. Lift that up a bit and you see we've got our leaves. Click OK. There it is. Add the layer mask and you see it. Now, we've almost got everything we need here. Let's just go ahead and hit Command I to invert it and you see there's the leaves. You'll need to touch this up a little bit and again, it does not need to be perfect. So I'll just select large areas here that I don't care about and we could just fill those with black. Here we go. Painting with black. And we just about have it. There we go. Zoom in here and we'll touch up those leaves. Grab the paintbrush, left bracket, smaller brush. There we go. And that's it. You just have to clean those branches out. Now, you might be saying to yourself, that looks like it's going to take some time. In fact, it will. But the more you mask, the easier it gets. And this is a very complex image. We're masking green objects off a green background and a red bird off of a reddish brown background. So it really doesn't get much tougher than this. I'll let you in on a secret. If you want to skip forward, I actually do have this file posted to the Photoshop for Video website. So you could play with it and make it a little easier. 
Let's go ahead and just blur that mask a bit so it's a little softer. There we go, Gaussian blur. And that works pretty well. All right, we've got our leaves branch. Now we've got our bird, we've got our branch, we have to fix the background. So if we take a look at just the background here and we zoom out, you'll see that we need to remove the bird from the scene. Easiest way to do that is to select the background and grab the clone stamp tool. Option click to set your source point and then start to clone. What I'm doing here is slowly cloning out the bird by cloning in that tree behind it. At this point, we'll do similar, select this soft blurry area here and clone it in. And remember, just little tiny strokes is all it takes. If you need to hide it a little bit, you can always go to your blur tool and blur that out a bit to soften it. All we're trying to do is remove the bird by cloning, and you don't have to do that good of a job, because the good news is, is that the bird is just gonna be replaced with the moving bird in front of it. So as long as you knock it out more or less, this'll work just fine. There we go. Option click to set a new source point, and it gets pulled out. If at any point in time you want to check yourself, you could just turn your bird layer and branch layer back on and get a good idea of what's happening. Home stretch, about five more clicks and we'll be done. There we go. And let's just extend that branch. Good. I'll take the blur tool, nice and big, right bracket, and just smudge that out a little bit to soften it. And we're in good shape. There's our background layer. Let's just double click and call that forest. Here's our bird layer and our branch layer. And it's all set. Toss away the color fill and let's save that as a PSD file. I'll just call this bird layers and name it and store it as a Photoshop file where I could find it. Now, there's more to it than this. We now need to move into After Effects CS3. But to see that part, you're going to need to come in next week. So in the meantime, jump on over to the PhotoshopForVideo.com website. You can go ahead and download this file and practice. I'll give it to you both as the source image and the layered PSD file. So if you lose patience with this part of masking, it's OK. You can jump forward. Tune in next week when we're going to animate this using the Puppet Tool.